All right, hello everyone. Um, time for another developer stream. Um, I just have to uh, sign into Twitch here so that if I type anything there, it'll show up. Um, so just give me a moment to do that. Now we're gonna find out what you're really made of. I usually don't need to because I can just respond through audio, but you never know. Um, So, how's everyone doing? If there is indeed anyone here. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, the Twitch stream here locally, but then it started playing an ad, so. You said you weren't going to be here, but you're here. Well, thanks for being here. Is it Take Walker or Take Walker? I just want to make sure I'm saying it all right. Oh, things are things are pretty good. Trying to get everything done before we go away for Christmas, so. All right. Um, I can play a little bit of background music here. Let me know if it's too loud or whatnot. Um, you guys hear it? It's just some... Uh, I have this sort of little collection of winter music from video games um, that I play, uh, you know, in winter. <laughs> it's just a tradition I have, sort of a seasonal playlist, if you will. Um, but I'm not sure if you guys can hear it yet, so let me know if it's too quiet or what, too loud or what. Um, okay, so today we're going, I'm going to continue working on One Deck Dungeon, obviously. Um, and, uh, we're going to focus on a specific skill. Um, you know, normally, uh, I've done, you know, bigger things like cards or whatever. Um, but this skill actually requires me to add quite a bit new to the engine. And, um... Most of what I've shown you so far has just involved using the system that already is set up um, uh, and just working off that. Um, and part of the reason is because it takes less time um, and uh, it already uses the structure so it's probably it's less likely to have bugs. Um, but now I'm going to be making new activations, uh, making new game actions, um, making or modifying an existing uh, effect controller, adding a new property to a model object, so um, so uh, there are you know quite a few um, diff new, new things we'll, I'll be showing you. Um, sorry I was just reading the chat there and I can't read and talk at the same time. Okay um, so the skill in question is this one. Um, gain a heroic six. You can only place it, use it to cover a box with, uh, with armor. And so, basically the way this is going to work is, um, when you use the skill, you immediately, uh, any applicable, um, challenge boxes will light up like basically I mean I say light up because that's what you'll see in the view it doesn't light up in the in the engine but basically like they become available and then you're like okay which one do I want to place the box on so you click here and then the die will go there um, or there um, so there are a few considerations with this um, so the first one obviously is that when you use the skill um, you need to have the heroic six ready to go. Um, we need to create a new uh, activation, and an activation is basically a way for the player to to interact with the game. Um, 
so we need one that allows the player to select a challenge box. So usually when you're placing a die, you know, you're actually just moving a die to an existing challenge box and each challenge box can accept uh, dice. But in this case, it's like from all the challenge boxes that are available, we want to select one of a subset. So we don't want to let you select all of them. We only want you to let select um, from the armor boxes and of those we only want you to be able to select one of them So it's a little bit different um, In that regard um, And uh, So and then the next thing we'll be doing after that uh, is um, This is one of the few skills that there's a condition in which the skill can't be used um, I mean, there's obviously like the global effects of a skill can only be used in a combat or a peril, but those are kind of taken care of by the game. This is a particular situation in which um, it can. This particular skill can only be used if there is a uh, armor box that's ready to accept it. If if they're all covered or whatever, then the um, the, that particular skill can't be used. So that's a bit unusual. So we'll need to be able to handle that situation. Um, and also another special thing is that once the uh, heroic die is in the box, you can't remove it. Because removing it would undo the effect or let the player cheat by like putting the s heroic six there and then moving it, you know, somewhere else um, that it's not allowed to be. So that's actually quite a bit of new things that the uh, the engine doesn't really do yet because it hasn't needed to do it yet. Um, so anyway, let's get started on that. So the first thing I'll do here is uh, let's see. Right, so we knew ha we have a new kind of skill, and I call this a place dice skill. Basically, like you get a die, but you have to place it immediately to the applicable places. Um, so I actually don't even have a, a, a um, test suite for that yet. So I'll make a new one. Um, and in, right now, I think this will be the only test that's in it, but. Um, if we do Forest of Shadows, then I know that that has a couple as well. Um, but that that's okay if there's just one test in here for now. So we'll just uh, make a new text fix test fixture. We'll call it Place Dice Skill Test. And uh, this particular skill is called Armor Crush. And there's a, there's a number of things we'll need to test for it, but um, I'll just kind of add those in as we go along. So we start a new game. Um, first, let's go. Uh, so, so first we have to get the skill. So gain skill and then go to another encounter because you can't use it in the same encounter you get it at because by the time you get it, the encounter's already done. So, uh, armor crush. And then, in the follow-up encounter, we'll say that uh, we want to go to a glooping ooze. Um, and then, we'll, we'll have to cover the case with um, wide boxes, because it's a little bit different, the restrictions. But, um, even having just a base test uh, to just verify that it works in the simplest situations, uh, not a bad idea. So gain the armor crush skill and face a glooping ooze. And uh, again, I'm just using this little helper that I have that kind of takes care of a lot of the things for me. Um, so that I don't, oh, uh oh, not responding. Uh oh. Maybe I have too many things running. <sighs> oh 
Okay, sorry about this. Um, quit, quit some things here. Okay, I'm just gonna close Xamarin and reload it. Sorry about this. I wasn't doing anything complicated, so I'm not really sure what I suddenly didn't like, but. <clears throat> Well, by the way, do I need to zoom in a bit on the code? I forgot to do that. I'll, I'll just go ahead and do that in case anybody's watching in a window. It'll be easier to see. There, is that better? Okay. Anyway, sorry about that diversion. Hopefully it won't happen again. Yeah, something's up. It usually doesn't take more than a second for the test suite to pop up. Not sure what's going on here. Alright, sorry about these technical difficulties. Um, yeah, stream's going in and out. Yeah, something's up. I can't even tell what it is that... I guess I'll stop the music. It's not really necessary. It's nice, but it might be interfering with things. Um, hopefully that does a good thing. Um, anyway. Let's go ahead here. All right. So we have this test. Uh, open it up, and it does a lot of things for us because it's a helper, and that's what helpers often do. Uh, they make things easier. Um, so it goes to an encounter where it can get the armor crush, um, which also happens to be a glooping ooze. <laughs> and then uh, after that. Um, we go to claim loot and Paladin gains the skill on glooping ooze which is armor crush and then we go to the next glooping ooze which presumably doesn't have armor crush um, and you'll see here the armor ones are enabled but these ones are disabled because you're not allowed to use those until you do these ones okay um, so, right, so first thing we do, um, let's go to our skill list, and here it is, the effect class, the effect class type is place dice. And the die combo is heroic six. Um, oh yeah, and this text needs to be updated. This is from the the old edition, um, so I'll just go ahead and do that now. Um, Um, and then, uh, so it would make sense normally that I would have to put in some information about you can only use it to cover a box with armor as a parameter. But the thing is, is that this skill is the only skill that does this particular thing where you get a die, but immediately have to place it on a particular criteria. Um, and as a result, uh, even if I, even though I could provide those parameters and make it, and do the extra work to make it uh, support that, 
Uh, it's not necessary yet because that's the only one in the game that uses it. So I can just say anything that uses the effect class type place dice, uh, th that die can only go... Actually, I don't even need the heroic six because um, I can just say that anything that calls this uh, g must place a heroic six on um, a armor box. And this should be bold. And then um, in Forest of Shadows, there is a card uh, that um, that you know has a little bit more to it, um, like the Hunter, I think. Um, but I can always add the parameters later. Um, they don't need to be there right now um, because this isn't saved to the model. This isn't serialized, um, so I can make changes to it pretty easily and it'll work. Um, I did that a number of times in bottom of the ninth and that was never a big issue. So, um, Okay, so it's using the place dice. So now I have a little stub here um, and stub code is usually like oh, enough code exists to make it so that the engine knows what it like the code can recognize it but it doesn't really do anything. Um, so you'll see here, like, I do have a place dice effect controller already, but it doesn't do anything. Um, I didn't even add my regions yet. And the important one is the do do effect one. And the effect is, um, I'll just copy it from here. And so what we'll do is we'll kind of shortcut through this. So we'll just say like, when you use the effect, you s you um, you select the um, the uh, ch challenge box you want to put it on, um, and you know if we want if we want to like have this part first, then we'll have to disable everything else to make sure you don't do it. Try and do anything else with it in the meantime. Um, but for now, I'll just. Uh, I'll just make it so it goes kind of directly from the general supply to that box. Um, so select um, so activate select challenge box. Okay. So that means like get ready to select a challenge box um, and we have to provide some criteria for that so uh, let's see a challenge box now I'm writing code that doesn't exist yet um, and I do that sometimes just to kind of like show me the next thing that I should work on um, rather than working backwards so um, so activate challenge box Okay, so we have to select one of the challenge boxes, and that challenge box has to be an armor challenge box. So I'm going to go down the chain here. Um, the other one I had uh, an already flat list, so I'll just keep consistent with that actually. Um, box choices.
and then there's got to be some sort of follow-up so okay we've selected the thing but what do we do next so that's where the response comes in because um, the response can't actually happen until we've made the selection and then uh, that just calls something on game controller because we use the mediator pattern which means that everything has to go through a central um, brain if you will um, it's basically like everything's going through the rules of the game making sure that everything is okay so it's not allowed to directly activate the uh, challenge box and then activate actually this should be activate select challenge box to distinguish it from uh, the challenge box activations which are where you're placing and removing dice because right now we just want to select which challenge box um, we want the skill to be used on. Um, so the source is this and box choices and response. Should be good for now. And copy this and go to where this is. Okay. And we need a source for everything. The source is basically like what's calling this um, so that we can look up the chain and, and get some information important. I'll just go ahead and make this full screen. Um, and then so we have this, except now it's select cha oops, challenge box activation. We'll also probably want to put a select um, challenge box reason um, so that the view knows like why we're doing this. Because um, I mean it could just go ahead and highlight all those boxes but it's useful for the view to also know um, this is the reason why so that like you know it could put something on the screen like select a challenge box to cover or whatever um, it doesn't have to use it but it's better to just go ahead and provide it because it's really uh, simple to do um, so place uh, place die actually okay. And then again, you'll see it's complaining because this doesn't exist yet. So we have to create that. Um, so that is what I will do. And yeah, that has quite a bit going on there. Just copy an existing one and hollow it out. Let's see, decision makers.
responder. Noticed a bit of an inconsistency here between some that say responder and some that say response, so I'll probably fix that up at some point. Challenge. I'll, con I'll explain what's going on here in a sec. Um, So this will be taken care of automatically. So basically we just deactivate it. And the responders will do their thing. And then this also needs a reason. It's just a helper to let us know what's going on. And select where to place the die. There, and this is just, um, I do this as, um, sorry, trying to talk and type at the same time here. Um, I put this in here so that this is the output that gets shown uh, when I run a test and the, um, the view, i.e. the UI side can take a look at it if it wants. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm making a new activation that will be sent to the view. Um, I have to tell it um, who is making the decision, so in this case it'll be the one that used the skill. So I still have to provide that, I forgot to do that. Um, the boxes, which of the challenge boxes uh, we're allowed to select, the reason we're selecting the boxes, uh, in this case just place dice, place die, and uh, what happens after we've selected it, which we haven't coded that part yet. Um, okay. And then so what happens, give info is basically the, the way that the view tells something to the engine. Um, and in this case, the info that the, the engine needs is um, which challenge box has been selected. Um, and so then it says, okay, I'm going to set my selected challenge box to the one the view told me. Do activation is what happens once the view decides it's done giving information. So it calls proceed, which does a couple things, and then calls do activation. Um, the activation 
obviously gets deactivated uh, but if we go to the um, to the base here um, proceed does at the activation and then uh, for each responder um, it does the response so this is the part where like it'll actually do something with the information about which challenge box was selected um, and then yeah don't worry about this one <laughs> um, so let's see if that even compiles I think it won't because I didn't provide the decision maker yeah so I enumerable hero card controller decision makers so I have to provide who's actually allowed to make this decision um, and then go back up uh, let's see what did I response reason oh I have it in a different order here okay just change the order and make this public so the the base can see it and provide that with the so as you can see this is a bit more involved than the stuff I've been showing you um, you before in previous streams um, because uh, you know we're actually doing something new um, like we're adding something to the engine that it didn't do before whereas before it was using existing structures and you can kind of see how there's more involved uh, when you do that Um, am I down? I'm trying to watch the stream and it says content not available. Please let me know if there's a technical issue that I'm not. Oh, all still good. Okay, I don't know. I'll just refresh my browser, I guess. Okay. Um anyway. Responder. Oh, typos. Right, so first I find active challenge boxes there. And then here, so the decision maker is this dot owner is the um, the one who's using the skill basically. Um, and we'll make that an enumerable because um, you can have more than one decision maker um, you know if both players are making it together or whatever um, this doesn't become a huge issue until you're especially in a co-op game until you're doing online mode but anyway may as well make it there so it's, it's already there um, also if there's plur four player mode then you know it can be like two out of the four people make the decision kind of thing. Um, right, so we have to we still have to write the responder, so I'll just put responder there to remember that. Select challenge box reason place dice. Okay. So yeah, now now we need something to happen. Um, so we'll write private 
void um, place die response let's see if that compiles or if I missed anything okay so that seems to resp to uh, to compile um, let's run this I don't expect any major changes okay and then so <coughs> if we look at the skill again we'll notice that you have to pay a strength die in order to use it now by this point in the test um, we're using the paladin I have found her to be sort of the one of the more ideal um, characters to use for general testing um, and the paladin already has rolled uh, three strength die and they're all sixes because um, for the sake of testing unless I specifically override it we just assume all the rolls are sixes and that just gives me something consistent and safe to work with um, so we have to place a die um, on that skill so die type oops die type strings six uh, crush so we place a die on the skill and basically the um, Oh, did I do? Why is that red? Oh, I need to need to import it. Um, and basically, like, what that'll do is it'll put the the strength die on it, and then it's like, oh, I I have enough payment. I'm going to use that skill now. So let's run that. Okay. So um, right. So here's what happened. It moved. Um, so it moved uh, a strength six from the dice pool to armor crushes payment and then it's like oh I have enough for this skill so then it goes ahead and moves it from the payment to the general supply basically that's just discarding it and then all the other activations are disabled because it's waiting for this to be resolved right we don't want the player to start converting dice in all this other stuff while it's still waiting for something to happen so these are temporarily disabled while this is waiting um, to be resolved and yeah I, well actually I guess since these are all disabled I can just go ahead and um, and like since it specifically says gain like to me that implies it moves to their dice pool first um so maybe yeah maybe I'll just do that move die so we have to get heroic 6 um to this dot owner hero controller dot dice pool and move die reason um Place die. I'll have to make a new one for that. Mm. Oh, that didn't go where I wanted it to go. There we go. Okay. And then we'll just have to find a heroic six. Oops, I type is, I'm getting all confused here. Um, and then we, yeah, we move the die, set die value six. OK, 
Okay. Obviously, we want to make sure that we've actually found that. So this is actually another situation in which this um, situation can't, or this skill, sorry, can't be used is if there are no heroic dice left in the um, in the general supply. Like there's there's nothing to do. <laughs> so uh, so I want to make sure that's no no. Let's see. Let's run that now. Alright, so um, that's the strength die used to pay for the skill. Um, it discards that die, and then it removes a heroic die from the general supply to the paladin's dice pool. And normally that's where you would roll it, but in this case um, you don't have to because it already has a value, so it just sets the die value. Sets the die value to 6, and then it disables everything else so that you can't do anything else with it. You're just, basically it's just like, okay, tell me where to put this now. Um, and the game won't move forward until you, you do. So, um, again, we'll have to make sure that there is a place for it to land, but uh, we haven't gotten there yet. So right now we're just assuming there always is. Okay. Okay, um, so right, so now what we need to do is actually make it so that the test harness is able to recognize this new type of activation. Um, it can show up here, but there's no way in the test to tell it what we want. Um, so pay for the skill and place it in the magic three armor box. And just to remind you here, that's this one right here because, um, you know, if you're getting a heroic black uh, six, um, you may as well place it in the highest value one. In every situation I can think of, there might be somewhere you wouldn't want to, but we'll just assume that's where we want to put it. Um, so then here we would type uh, use select challenge box activation um, I type uh, magic three and so this doesn't exist yet so we have to make that um, so I'm just gonna close the others because I do that every once in a while once this gets starts getting too cluttered go to the base test and then we'll go to wherever use select die activation we'll just put it right after right after that I guess doesn't super matter as long as it's in the right area use select challenge box activation and then um, let's say if we wanna I can also make it so I can provide a specific box but um, for now this is this is fine um, I can just override it with whatever I actually need when I need it. Select box, find activation, challenge box, activation. So it goes ahead and finds that. It assumes there's only one at this point. Um, and currently in the game, there only ever will be one. So, um, so uh, that's fine. The challenge box, right, I guess I can to be consistent there, box value, box value, I don't think we need any others, and then, right, because, um, um, actually, maybe we'll, instead of getting a ch any old challenge box, we'll just look at the, uh, the choices that match that because um, that's more precise we don't want them to be able to we don't want the test to be able to select a box that isn't even selectable so um, is die, oh, die type
and again we're just assuming that there is one and that the test won't call something that it's not supposed to um, and if the test does call something that's not supposed to then it needs to fail anyway um, so but this is kind of long-winded at this point so I'll say um, select box or, no that already exists box to select there we go um, and then if box to select is not equal to null, else uh, assert we failed the test if if this is provided bogus data. Um, Maybe we'll actually make these nullable since uh, not all of them have uh, a die type. So I don't know. And then so some of the box values are dynamic. So um, select, and so we give the info the box to select, and then tell it to proceed. Okay, so this is where it left off last time. Um, oh my, these all got deactivated. What have I done? Hold on. I think I know what I did. Yeah. We just want to deactivate this activation, not all activations. Yeah, that's how bugs slip in, you know, like you use the wrong helper or something. But, I mean, obviously there are harder bugs than that, but small uh, coding errors like that can make something do weird things. So select where to place the die. Um, as soon as we've made that selection, which we just have, uh, it deactivates, it re-enables everything else, and and then we're done. And the reason we're done, and it hasn't actually moved, is because we haven't told it to yet. So right now, that die is just kind of hanging out in the uh, dice pool, which we wouldn't want to actually happen. Um, so let's go back to our effect. And actually, let's make an assert, because basically until this does what it's supposed to do, I like it that the test fails, because then it shows me there's still something more to do. Um, rather, because, you know, if I ran the, if I, let's say I left the computer, right, for an, the day or whatever, because I was done and I came back tomorrow, and, you know, I forget exactly where I was or whatever, um, having a test fail at a particular point reminds me, oh yes, like that's that's where I was. You know, I usually write a note to remind me, but just in case. Um, so, um, right. So as soon as we place the die, um, assert activation. We want to assert that there is a select. I just forgot to do that. So we're just making sure that there is one. Um, and then as soon as I use it, it shouldn't be there anymore. And that that much should uh, still return a pass test. Yep. And then, um, but then I also have to make sure that that die is not on, um, not in the dice pool anymore, and it is on the box we expect. Um, so, let's see. 
Right, so remember how before I said I could just do this to be convenient and I can override it later? Well, now is the time because I actually need a, ver uh, a box object to check. So, Yeah, so actually I will do And this becomes a little bit simpler. So basically we say like one of the choices should be the one I gave you. And then in the output I can just do And so assert at location. Um, row x six at the box. So we don't have this set as a variable yet. Um, so we need to get that one. Um, so at this point, before we use the uh, w select where to put it, it should be uh, in the um, hero's uh, dice pool. And then once we use it, it shouldn't be there anymore and it should be on the box we, want, we expect. Heroic 6, uh, dice pool. And then afterwards, it should be on the box and cert. Well, I guess I don't really have to cert not at location, but because if it is here, then it isn't here. So. so this I would expect to return false at this point, unless something crazy happened. Yeah. So. Um, does not have its location set to glooping use magic three armor. It was in Paladin's dice pool. Um, cool. So, so now we got to go back here, and this is the response. Um, just so you see, it should reach at least this point. Um, so I'll just do this so it gives some output to to uh, verify that. Um, yeah, right there. So that's where um, our new code is going to go. So move the selected or move the die to the selected um, challenge box. And so here we can actually do die because we need to know what die we select we had up here um, the one we moved and we can select challenge box um, specify what kind we have here and then in response we do this six a select oh a as select And this is getting kind of long, so maybe I'll do that so we can 
see it without having to scroll around a lot. Um, oh, I clicked one too many parentheses. Okay. Still does what we expect. All right. So, um, so th actually, this is pretty straightforward. So first, let's just make sure that it has a um, a box that isn't null. Um, and if it is, if we want to log a warning, because that's a problem. Um, Um, these are just sort of like if something goes wrong in the code, um, rather than scratching our heads wondering what happened, uh, this gives us a clue as to where where to look. Um, this can be super valuable because right now, as we're running the test, um, you know we might know that or might be obvious where the problem might be, but you know let's say in the game has been out for two months and then uh, somebody reports a bug um, and it's not obvious what's going on having just this little piece of output could make all the difference between you know an hour of work and five minutes of work so um, okay so the selected challenge box isn't null uh, and we already know this die isn't null because we can't get here if it is so we don't need to worry about that. Um, and this isn't an error if there are no dice at location. This doesn't cause an error um, because uh, you know it is possible. Um, although this shouldn't actually, actually I'm going to put it because we shouldn't be allowed to use the skill in that case. So um, it's it's not as big of a problem because basically you're just trying to use a skill you can't use but um, and it won't let you but anyway um, place dice controller effect was called but there no Yeah. All right. Anyway, back to the thing I keep trying to do. Um, so move die die to the selected challenge box and move die reason uh, place place die in challenge box. Okay. So now let's try that. Let's see what happens. Okay. Um, so here we select where to place the die. The test selects it. I guess I could put some output to indicate it selected it rather than just deactivating. Um, yeah, why don't I go ahead and do that now? Um, output. Right, so the activation comes in, selected the Glooping Ooze Magic 3 armor box, it deactivates it, it moves the Heroic 6 from the dice pool uh, to that um, box, it re-enables everything else because now they're allowed to do stuff again, and it considers the um, Armor Crush skill to have been used. Um, so everything looks the way I would hope it would. And then yeah, there's an assertion here saying it should be at that box, whereas before it was checking to make sure it was in the dice pool. So that uh, looks good. Um, let's see, it's already been an hour. Um, I guess this uh, that part took a little longer than I expected actually. Um, 
partly because I was explaining things and partly because I forgot a thing here and there. Um, but uh, if you guys are not bored, I can keep going. I have to do the work anyway, so. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see. Right. So. Um, I guess this is just a basic use. Um, so now the thing we want to check is that if there are um, no no available armor boxes to put it in, the skill can't be used at all. Um, so it's disabled during that time. Okay, so can just copy this. Okay, so right now the armor crush can be used. Um, right, so. Find activation, skill activation, and the I guess I could, yeah, I should probably, I'll, I'll just make a helper for this, because that's pretty long winded. Find skill activation. Okay. right here I'll just get this to use that Okay, so I'll put two of these. One of these. So this pr returns all of them. Because one of the things wants multiple, and we just want the one. So. Use this. First of default. There. Let's see if that works. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So yeah, make sure it's enabled. So that much should be fine. Cool. So now what happens is, and I'll just pull this up to visualize it. So there's two uh, armor boxes, and we have that s we have we have this skill over on the side. You can imagine it's not on the card. It's actually like available to us. And right now it's let's say it's glowing, saying, "Oh, you can use this." Um, and uh, 
and uh, you have to um, of course pay for it with a strength die um, but let's say that you had three two or three uh, magic die dice in your dice pool which the paladin has three already and it's enough to cover these so you pull up a magic two and you put it there and you pull up a magic three and you pull it there well all of a sudden there's no there are no uh, armor dice or sorry there are no armor boxes left to put a heroic six so this skill should fade to gray or something now the activation isn't gone and the reason is because if you move a die off of it then it reactivates or sorry it, it becomes enabled again um, so we don't want to actually like get rid of the activation we just want to say um, you know you can't use me right now um, so we distinguish between an activation being activated and deactivated as like whether or not it even exists and then enabled or disabled is a bit softer um, that's kind of like I can be used at this exact moment or I cannot um, so we expect that to be disabled as soon as these are covered and re-enabled again as soon as we uh, uncover one of them. Death Taru says, it's cool to watch all the cards being built to come to life digitally. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I mean that's part of why this job is so much fun. <laughs> is It's like you know how all this stuff works on the tabletop, but on the tabletop, you know, like it's always um, you know humans in charge of everything um, so if you were to just like say play the game in um, tabletop simulator you know you could see all the components and stuff but you still have to manually maintain all the rules um, so it's kind of nice to like it's kind of neat to be able to like make a system that like understands the rules of the game um, and that's you know that's a big reason why we uh, do what we do is because we think it's cool to watch the game um, you know we love playing on tabletop but there are definitely situations in which um, digital is also uh, a really cool experience so that's the one we do all right so right now it can be used um, so now let's uh, Let's get some some dice. Die type magic six and index zero. So there are because they're all sixes, I just have to distinguish which one I mean. Not the value is sixty one and sixty two, obviously. Um, actually I'll put to be consistent with the index here. Um so we place die magic six zero on um, I'll get the boxes too. Sometimes I don't have to like get them all as um, individual objects, but in other cases it's useful. So um, So we place one of the magic six on the magic two and one of the magic six on the, um, okay. And so after we place the first one, this armor crush activation should still be available. But as soon as we put the, th the, uh, the second one and they're both covered, um, uh, now it should be disabled. And since we haven't coded this part yet, this is the this is the point at which I expect it to fail at this point. Now 
Now, okay, so yeah, so let's take a look at what happened. So it moved the, um, it covered up the magic two, it covered up the magic three, and then all of a sudden, all the other challenge boxes um, became enabled because now you're allowed to put dice on them. But what it didn't do is disable uh, that skill, which is what we need to do now. Um, so I don't think that'll be too hard. Let's see here. Oh, every time you say I don't think that'll be too hard. You're jinxing yourself, right? Um. So, uh, so over here, override can be enabled now. Um, so basically, this is checked um, by the um, skill activations. Uh, whenever there's an action to see if an action somehow changed the enableability, if that's even a word, um, of the uh, of the skill at all. So in this case it would. So let's put a little comment here. Um, effect can only be enabled if there are any armor boxes that and still accept dice. And what do you know? I have a little helper for that. Um, and actually, I can just go ahead and return that because it's either true or false. Um, and uh, yeah, I, ha I had this already because it needed it for some other rule things. So, so basically, the idea is, can this be enabled now? Well, if there are any armor boxes that have space for more dice, then it can be. If not, then it can't. So it should return um, a simple true or false there. Um, so let's, let's see if that actually does what we expect. Um, I haven't used this uh, a whole lot, so um, I'm not sure that it's robust, but it looks like in this case, let's see, yeah, so right there, after it moved the um, magic three, disabled, it, you disabled the skill, um, gain a heroic six, you can only use it to cover, see? Um, Uh, Dwarf asks in the chat, as you can create variable inline rather than in a header or somewhere, how do you keep track of your variable numbering, like magic 61? Uh, the answer is that the tests are so short that it's hard to get lost. Um, you know, like if I go here, this test isn't going to be too much longer. Um, so keeping track of just these two. Um, is pretty simple. Um, you know, obviously if this were a big test uh, I wouldn't want to do that and if this were a part of the engine I wouldn't want to do that because the engine needs to be a little bit more generic and stuff. But in a test you can be very specific because you are testing specific situations. Um, so, I mean if I don't... I guess I don't even need both. Yeah. I mean, I could have just done one of them. I could have just done, um, you know, like this, and then used a helper here, because basically I just need a way to make sure I'm removing the same die, um, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, so we'll do this. Place dice on both uh, armor boxes. Armor becomes disabled just so if I'm reading this later I remember what this test is even trying to do and then remove a die from one of the armor boxes armor crush becomes enabled again so remove placed die um, Let's move, let's say, the magic 61. 
Um, okay, and as soon as I do that, uh, this should be enabled again. And I guess we'll see if that actually happens. Yep. Um, so it moved the uh, the die um, away from the magic tube back to the dice pool, and as soon as you do that, uh, that skill becomes enabled again. Um, and then let's remove the other one. And obviously there should be no change there. Should still be enabled. And let's yeah so I mean I could just put them back on and make sure it's disabled again but that's I mean that's basically what we tested up here so I don't know that that would just be redundant yeah so it moved it aw moved it back to the dice pool it became enabled moved the other one that didn't affect its ability to be used at all and then from there, the rest of it's already tested in the basic use. So, uh, so that's a pretty good test there. Um, and then, yeah, this is where I would stop. So, you know, um, for Dwarf uh, 52, you know, keeping track of this for a few lines of code isn't a big deal. Obviously, I wouldn't do it for a whole whack of dice and I wouldn't do it if the tests were longer, but for this, not a, not a huge problem. Um, okay, so that takes care of that part, and then that didn't take too long. Um, what else? Right, so once a die is in the challenge box, it's not allowed to be removed. Um, that's something we haven't done at all yet, yet. because um, if you could remove it, then that would just basically undo the effect, and it's not the intention. The intention is once you use the skill and the die is there, the die is there. Cannot remove after placed. Of course, one thing we'll need to do with that is make sure that, you know, at the end of the battle, when you claim the loot and all the dice move back to the dice pool, um, that, you know, that all works. And that it's not just stuck on the, on the card for the rest of the game or anything like that. Okay, so... Um, Right, so we can just do this again. So use armor crash to place a heroic tie on um, a armor box. It cannot be moved away from the challenge box. Okay. Um, so let's see here. What's the shortest way to do that? Um, yeah, I basically can use this, but I'll take out some of the assertions because we already have that covered in that test there. So... Actually, I may as well just keep them as variables. I'm changing my mind a couple times here. Okay, so we know it's there now because the other test has told us that that works. Um, 
so now it cannot be moved. Um, so this is a new thing, the idea that uh, a particular die is not allowed to be moved. Um, so we'll have to add in some support for that. So assert die cannot be moved. I guess assert die is movable. Uh, six false, right? So at first, um, so before we actually select the box, it is movable because we need it to move from the uh, dice pool to the challenge box, but then afterwards it can't be moved. Um, so we'll just add one in the die section. Void assert tie is movable. Tie is movable. Are equal, oh, are equal. We expect it to be whatever we provided. Oop, movable. Die is movable. And then expected die dies. Is movable to be what it was. There we go. So, yeah, this property doesn't actually exist yet, so we'll need to add that in and we'll need to put in some logic behind it. Um, so, a die is actually a mo an object uh, in the model. Um, I'll only briefly explain that because it's not terribly important, but for some people it might be interesting. Um, basically, we use model view controller um, pattern, and the model is, to simplify the way to explain it, the model is data. It's anything that needs to be saved. Um, it's the state of the game, and the main reason it has to be serializable is because if you close the game, you know, the RAM is cleared, all that stuff is gone, so when you load up the game again, uh, it needs to be able to load the game in the same state. Um, you know, for very small things, you know, you can just save everything, uh, including the logic, um, you know, and some older ROMs and things like that do that. But for basically anything else that isn't really small. Um, you need to say like what's important to save and what isn't. And usually the state of the logic isn't, so that's why the model, which has the data, and the controller, which has all the logic, are separated from each other. And the model is serializable, meaning all the data can be saved uh, to, sim to simplify what that means, and then uh, the controller is not serializable, meaning nothing of the, the logic is saved. Like once you close the game, all that stuff is gone and it needs to sort of recreate it uh, based on the, in the data that's available in the model. Um, but one thing we do need to do is save whether or not a die is movable um, to the model because if we close the game and load the game, uh, we don't want the player to suddenly be able to move that die away. So that's why we're putting it here. And obviously we want this to be true most of the time, so we're going to have to do a little bit of checking just to make sure we haven't, you know, we don't actually lock the die any time that it's not supposed to be in, which is very few cases actually, at least so far. Um, or not the die is allowed to be moved. Okay, so when it's first made, we want to make sure it's true. Oops. And very few things will change that. But we need to provide a method so that it can be changed.
Now, for those of you um, used to properties, you might say, well, why did I have a set method when I could just go like this? And that's because I like to make it a little bit more explicit to the user that, you know, you're making a change to the model here and it's a significant change. So calling a method called set movable um, is a little bit more, I guess, explicit than just setting a, setting a value. Um, it's just it's it's more of a safety thing than anything else um, but I find it just like cuz uh, there have been times before where I would just do something like this but then it makes this too easy to change and then sometimes things that shouldn't change it uh, change it just because it's not as obvious that like um, you know only certain things should have should be calling this so Anyway, it's so it's more of a, a personal safety net than anything else. Um, anyway, maybe most of you didn't even think about that, so I don't know. Okay, so uh, if we run this um, now that we uh, act now that that actually exists, um, it should fail here. Yeah, and then the reason expected die dot is movable to be false, but it was true. And I guess we should uh, also include the die in question here to make oop, to make it a little more useful as output. Yeah, heroic six, number twenty-four. Okay, um, so yeah, so now we have to actually uh, do stuff to make that happen. So if we go to place dice uh, effect controller, um, we move the die, and then. Um, set die is movable to false. So again, this doesn't exist yet, so we go up the chain. Action methods, add a new one. There's a lot of them now. There we go. And then we just call the same thing on the game controller. Um, this is the source is movable. And then we find a little spot in the bottom here. I mean, it doesn't super matter where it is, but. As long as it's within this region, um, set die is movable. Base controller source die die to set. Boo. Yeah, I didn't even provide the die. I re just realized. I'll do that in a second here. Action new set die. Uh, this this dot game source die to set is move and do the action and I'll just go back here and quickly add in the the needed stuff. Okay, so now it'll complain that the uh, action doesn't exist, and that is a fair complaint because we haven't created it yet. So we're now we're adding a new game action. 
So before I showed you activations, and those are any time that the engine needs some information from the view. Um, usually some sort of interaction from the player, but sometimes there are some special things as well. Um, an action is something that the um, the engine just goes ahead and does. Like it doesn't need any special permission. It doesn't need to consult the view or it doesn't need information. It just is like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. And then it tells the view about it, both before it does it. So it says, I'm about to do this uh, in case the view wants to, you know, do some visual thing to anticipate the event. Um, and then it's it goes ahead and does the action, makes the changes in the engine, and usually those changes involve a change to the model, although not always. And then uh, the action says, okay, I'm done. And then uh, in addition to that, um, other effects have a chance to respond to that action having just occurred. Um, so, you know, y it, like for example, um, some foes have an effect that says uh, discard all ones and threes rolled. So after uh, you roll some dice, um, that effect can take a look at those dice and say, aha, there's some ones and threes, I'm going to discard them now. Um, so actions are a way to sort of encapsulate what's going on uh, and uh, easily keep an eye on them both from the view and within the engine itself. Um, I think this is called the command pattern um, and uh, we've used it since Sentinels and it has proved time and time again to be uh, a very good pattern for what the kind of thing we do. So. So make a new one. Um, I usually just copy from Explore Action because that's a pretty, pretty basic action. Just hollow that out. Xamarin doesn't do a great job with templates, so that's why I kind of do all this stuff manually. Um, it only takes a few seconds, though, so it's not a huge deal. Um, so the friendly string of that would be... Um, setting dies... Okay, so um, die, die, being set and bool, uh, set movable. Um, another reason there's a an action for this particular thing is the view might want to show an animation of this happening. So you know, like as soon as you put it there, you know, a big lock could come up on it or something like that. Um, 
It doesn't have to, but the view wouldn't be able to do it unless it knows what's going on. Um, so that's why that's another reason we're making this an action. Um, so this dot die being set set movable. Right. And so again I like here, this is the only place that should actually be calling a die is set movable. Um, if anywhere else does it in the engine, and then it's sort of breaking the code. <laughs> not not actually like making it not work, but it's like breaking the contract that we've set out that actions are the ones that are allowed to change the model. Um, now because there's just one person working on this engine most of the time, uh, it's easy to keep track of, but if there were multiple people that would just sort of have to be something we we all understood and agreed to. Um, set die is movable action. Just a few little typos there. Okay. Um, see what happens. All right, so um, move the die from the dice pool to the armor box, and then it's set. So it, the game automatically saves. Um, uh, at that point, and then setting die that is movable to false for this one. So now that is set to false. Um, might actually need it to save after this to make sure that this uh, is, is still movable. I'll, I'll do the save load stuff afterwards. That, t that stuff can be kind of tricky. Um, but anyway, I'm not worried about that right now. I'll just, I'll just make a to-do for that. Um, cool, so now it is not movable. So what we need to do also is um, I'll explain this in a sec here. Okay. So the next thing we need to say is, am I allowed to remove this die from this box? Um, and this is the chance for the engine to tell the view, no, don't do that. Um, because technically the engine can't stop the view from like moving the die away from the uh, the challenge box but it can at least like be consulted the view can ask the uh, the engine am I allowed to remove this and it says no if the view goes ahead and does it anyway well that's sort of the fault of the person doing the view um, but like you know the engine is at least giving it the information it needs and this is asserting that the information is accurate. I expect that this will actually uh, fail now because I don't think that we haven't done anything to make it handle that yet. So it says um, die should not be removable from challenge box. Okay. Um, so what we need to do there is just go to challenge box activation um, is valid die placement? That's one of them. And then place die. Is valid die removal? This is the one we're interested in. Else, if, um, if, if the die isn't movable, then we should return false. Right? Um, Okay, so now let's try that. Yeah, and there we go, it passes. Um, 
And that just means that the, the, the engine is correctly telling the view, like, hey, don't do that, please. Um, and hopefully the view will not, not try to do it, because if it does, the engine will say, hey, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, so that's good. Um, cool. So, um, and that will stay like that uh, until uh, the until the um, the die has to be removed from it to go back to the general supply. Um, yeah, <laughs> migrant P he programs the view and says no promises. It's like well, <laughs> the engine will uh, will spit it here. I'll just try and do it here. Removed place die. Heroic six box. Let's just see what happens. Um, yeah, it just won't even do it. Test tried to remove heroic six on invalid challenge box. Like, it's just like. No, sorry. I put a safety net in, in place to make sure it just wouldn't even do it, and that the test would fail if you tried. So, um, yeah. <laughs> just don't do it. Um, okay, so now we go to, um, let's see. So, Go to the next, uh, I guess it would be right at the claim loot phase. Yeah, as soon as you claim it as loot, then all those dice should go away. And let's just say we're getting it as experience. And so now we want to make sure that location. Assert at location. Sorry, I'm blank. I blanked out for a second there. Um, assert at location. General supply. That's where it should be um, after we've moved it. Cool. So it did that, and we also want to make sure that its movability has been set back to true. Um, and this is the part that I don't think. I, th I think we'll fail because we haven't we've never set it back to true so I don't know why it would be true at that point yeah so it's false so basically um, we just want to make it so that uh, let's go um, Here, yeah. So as soon as it goes, as soon as a die goes back to the general supply, um, its value is reset. It doesn't have a value anymore. So it's not like just because it was a six doesn't mean it's a six anymore. Um, it no longer has an, a hero that owns that die because in two-player mode, it's important to know who owns the die. Um, and also, this dot die being moved dot um, is movable. Or, I guess I should do it the the proper way. Set die movable is movable. In case the uh, the view cares about this. In this case, I don't think it will. But I just want to make sure I'm letting the view know this just happened. Um, Oops, not false. Already is false. True. Okay. Set time movable true. And then we can just go ahead and like not even bother with this action. 
if the uh, if the movable value is already the same because otherwise it's just it's just redundant um, yeah cool so now it's back to true so um, the next time it's used because these are the same die objects so the next time you go into a battle it's going to be the same die object um, you want to make sure that that's not like left over from last time so cleanup is is pretty important and that, that like the way it's set up uh, anytime a die moves to the general supply it's cleaned up here um, so that should be fine okay um, and that about wraps up what I had planned for today. Uh, if there are any questions or comments or whatever's, um, now's a good time to ask. I'm just going to run off three of these to make sure that I didn't break anything. Looks good. Um, so yeah, I'll just give a minute or two for, uh, for any f response. And if there isn't, then uh, we'll wrap it up. Well, unless there's an unusually long delay, um, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Um, that was, J J JCC says that was a lot of interesting info. Um, good. I'm glad it's interesting. Um, you know, this is what I regularly work on, and I find it interesting. Um, but the majority of people that uh, you know, see it that I know, just kind of cross their eyes and walk away or whatever. So <laughs> or they're like, oh, I'm glad you know what's going on. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I know that there are other people who um, are interested in this kind of thing. And um, so I'm glad that uh, I can open that up and share that. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you again and um, I will, uh, I'll be leaving um, next week so happy holidays to everyone and uh, if I don't chat again uh, before then see you next year alright bye